So now that we're used to kind of the procedure and the steps, and we're just adding a layer of finish to everything, kind of touching everything, blending it, choosing colors, reshaping where we need it. This is going to take a while, but there aren't any new skills here. Just having the confidence to build it onto your layers. And to still try new things every once in a while, like add interesting colors in. It's a little like sponge painting, like I said. Pretty easy to control when you're only doing it at 50% opacity. But still, my finger hovers over the option key. And in an almost arbitrary way, I'm selecting colors and using them to blend in. Working out from the center of the face here. Within the shadows, which might seem flat in the photo reference, it gives me an opportunity to add more colors, more definition. or personality. And it doesn't happen with all digital paintings, no matter how much you've practiced, but this is kind of the stage where the magic starts to happen a little bit sometimes. And it will just start to come together, where it feels like you're, you're working in futility for a lot of the process in this refined paint layer where you really get to get hints at a finish. So the challenge is to, to bring it to as much of the project as you can within the time we have. And what I'm going to be looking for in your projects is that you've used the full the full process of base color and then refined paint to bring to a finish in, a, in at least a few parts of your, your painting. If you don't manage to, to cover everything the same, like if you were to actually turn in your project and it looks like kind of where mine is now, where the head in certain par parts is starting to get to that finish but the rest of the body you know, still has a long way to go, that would show me that you've learned these skills. And that you've been appropriately exposed to digital painting so that if you want to use it on your final project, you have that ability. Kind of know what you're in for. It also helps you understand why all the digital painters you see online, I won't say all, but the vast majority show you uh, time-lapse videos of their doing it, right? Where it's really sped up. Now, this is why the refined painting is important because at this stage, you've been working on it for a while and you might notice like I am right now, that there can be like foundational issues with it, like in the shapes, like this ear is a lot narrower than I have been doing it. And so I just use the pink color of the background and tighten that up. And even the side of the face is slimmer. So again, I'm not using a race, and I'm not trying to move my lines around. I just paint it more, just like I would on a canvas. Just add paint over the top. So it's incredibly easy in concept. It's just difficult in execution to get it to turn out OK. With lower opacities, smaller brush sizes, more deliberate and careful painting. but not so careful that you just stop making marks. You know, you're just always 
adding more pain. Going out all the way to the edges, even though they're not as interesting. Bringing those colors to those edges. inside of the ears, just whatever captures your attention. Now sometimes, like let's say you're uh, the person you're doing a digital painting of has glasses, it's actually best not to try to paint the glasses along with the rest of the face. It's best to paint the face and then paint the glasses on a new layer on top, right? So accessories, things that go onto the body things like jewelry. In the cat's instance, there's no glasses, but there are whiskers, right? And instead of trying to paint that into my refined paint layer, it might be better to, to just make a new layer on top, kind of like a color hold layer in digital coloring. And for that, I might change my brush settings a little bit. I might make it more opaque, I might make it a little bit smaller, and then I might just take a light color like this. I may just throw some of those whiskers in, like the ones in front of the ear. That's a little too small. or the ones coming out the side of the, the nose. Now these are very sharp edged. They can even kind of make some eyebrows. And depending on how much I want to build these, these are all done on a different layer little sharp-edged highlights in the whiskers. And that can be turned on and off. They can be softened. But what's interesting about them, I'll lock them for now, they exist underneath the, uh, the refined paint that I'm using. So I'm going to take my brush back to a larger size and down to about 50%. And I'm going to continue with my painting. And those whiskers will sit on top. If you study painting for a while, either digital painting or traditional painting, you'll start learning about color theory, about complementary colors. I have that fluorescent green, so I want to counter that with, with an orange. That's the complement to help that not you know, seem so toxic. <laughs> And that will actually kind of increase the potency of each color, but it will also balance them if they're next to each other. Purple and yellow I'm using a lot as complements in this. So it's not just using a rainbow to use a rainbow. And then again, at this stage, like I can always just go to image adjustment hue saturation and remind myself it's not the color that matters, it's the value that matters. You know, so if I take all of the color down on my refined paint layer, you can see all the gray values that are created with these colors and that's helped modeling the image. And you can always exaggerate those or not. So that's how it works. I know digital painters that paint the whole thing in grayscale and then just add colors over the top because they're so concerned about keeping the value range controlled. So lots of different methods to get to the same results. And all those little decisions add up to give you your quote unquote artistic style 
And this project, when you guys post it to Canvas, will be more diverse than any other project we do. Like everyone's going to have a very different take on it, different way of of drawing, of seeing the shadows, of putting them down. Much look far beyond just a difference in what kind of subject matter they're portraying. And that's pretty cool. Because again, the harder to control a material is in art, the more it reveals the the individual tendencies of the artist. That's why, to me, digital painting is a lot more than just telling a an artificial intelligence, you know, text text based art generator to make a digital painting. There's just a lot of personal decisions that go into how that might look. And you're getting a sense of that now. Just like make an oil painting. You know. So much variation. How people accomplish that task. Okay, so once I finish this ear, I think I'm going to be pretty done with the focal point. And that's a good place for today of the cat's head. And then I just want to kind of try to bring a finish to the rest of it. This is due next class. And then we're also introducing our final project next class. So I have about half the class period, or at least a full hour of the class period to work on it before doing a presentation critique. And my goal will be to try to, just because this is how I am, try to finish this off to where I'm happy with it without working on it outside of class, which is tough for me, especially with digital painting, which takes time and is kind of meditative. I'm going to do my best not to touch it between the end of this video and our next class period. But you guys don't need to adhere to that. You can work on your digital painting as much as you want. And then the other things I'm going to see if we have time to show next class is how we can combine this with some of the compositing skills we learned. And if you built it in the layers like I've been showing, like how you can leverage these in different ways. God, that looks freaky. I kind of like it. Where you put, you know, one layer on top, you can strip layers away. And you can play with copies of layers and play with different blending modes to get different variations on your painting that you might like more than, than just what you directly finished within the class period. So things to think about. Lots of room to explore and grow. Now, every once in a while, a student will just really take to digital painting and use it as the main approach for their final project as well. But this technique, everything we're doing here, in some ways should be used for everyone's final project in just finishing it off. So let's say you use digital coloring for your final project, but as the last part of it, just controlling little things, just going in and digitally painting, for special effects, for color holds, for just to, to emphasize certain aspects of the art. And these are the direct tools. You know, couldn't be simpler. <laughs> 